In this video, we're going to take a look at integration by substitution. So integration by substitution allows us to integrate a seemingly challenging integral by first performing a substitution. What this does, it changes the variable and integrand. You should also be aware that if we have a definite integral, the limits of integration can also change when we use a substitution. And finally, you will often be given the required substitution. However, you may occasionally have to choose your own substitution. Now, I'm not going to go into any kind of results that we need. There isn't really anything that we can use for integration by substitution. Like I said, you're often given the substitution that you need. You're given the integral that you want to find, and you're just kind of left to your own devices. So I think the best way to demonstrate this is to run through a few practice questions. Now, what I will say is integration by substitution is often what students find the most challenging topic of integration. So if you find this video challenging at first, that is normal. Um, what I would say is do a lot of practice questions, stick with the revision for integration by substitution, and hopefully you should find it gets a little bit easier in time and with a bit of practice. So there we have it. That's everything that we need then for our introduction here on integration by substitution. Let's jump into some practice questions. So I know for question one then, we want to use the substitution u equals sine x to find the integral of sine cubed x cos x dx. So let's just start by writing down the original integral here. So we had sine cubed x multiplied by cos x. And this is with respect to x here, so dx. And we're also using the substitution u equals sine x. So let's just write that down as well. So u equals sine x here. So now this is using substitution here. So integration by substitution, obviously we need to rewrite this integral now using the appropriate substitution. Well, sine cubed x, hopefully nice and straightforward. So if u is sine x, that would be u cubed. So here we get u cubed. The cos x is a little bit more problematic. So we'll come back to that in a moment. We also have the dx here. So we need a substitution for dx. So how do we obtain that? Well, what I'm going to do here is differentiate u with respect to x. That would give me du by dx. So we get du by dx here. And that would be simply cos x. If you differentiate sine x here with respect to x, we get cos x, like so. Now, for a derivative like this, we shouldn't really treat this like an actual fraction. However, for integration by substitution, we do break that rule somewhat. So what I'm going to do here is rearrange this fraction such that dx is the subject. So what I'm going to get then, if I rearrange this, obviously times through by dx, we get du equals cos x dx and then divide through by cos x here. So therefore, dx is equal to du over cos x. Okay. And what I can do now is substitute that in for dx here. And what you might notice straight away is that this cos x here will cancel with this cos x as well. So we've got u cubed cos x. And then we times that by du over cos x. So du over cos x, like so. And then from here, like we said, these will now cancel. So they cancel. And what I get left with here then is the integral of u cubed du. Okay. And from here, this is a nice straightforward integral to evaluate. So the integral of u cubed du, we simply add one to the power, divide by the new power. So we get u to the power of four. That's all over four. And notice here, we don't have any integrals on my badly drawn integral here. So we need our constant of integration. So plus c then. And then finally, rather than leaving it in this form here with u, we want to use this original substitution. So we know that u is equal to sine x. So in that case, then we can rewrite this as sine to the power of four x here, all over four, and don't forget the plus c again, like so. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our result there, giving us the solution to question one. Moving on to question two then, we want to use the substitution u equals 2x plus 1 to find the integral of x multiplied by the square root of 2x plus 1 with respect to x here. Let me just start by writing down the original integral here. So we're integrating. So it's x multiplied by the square root of 2x plus 1. And this is with respect to x here. And we're using the substitution then u equals 2x plus 1. Okay. 
Now, the very first thing that I'm going to do here is differentiate u with respect to x to get du by dx. So du by dx then. Well, nice and straightforward here, that would simply be 2. And then what I want to do here is rearrange this such that dx is the subject. And again, nice and straightforward here, what we get then is dx is equal to a half du. Okay. And now we can use this here for the substitution then for dx. We've got two other things to consider. We've got the x here at the front and then the square root of 2x plus 1. Well, the square root of 2x plus 1 is nice and straightforward because we know that u is equal to 2x plus 1. So that is just the square root of u, or in other words, u to the power of a half. But what about the x then? Well, this just comes from the original substitution here then. If we just rearrange this such that x is the subject, what we get here then is 2x is equal to u minus 1. And then if we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals u minus 1 over 2. Okay. So if we transform this integral here then using everything that we've got um, so far, what I've got then is the integral. So x is u minus 1 over 2. Or we can write that as a half u minus 1. We then got the square root of 2x plus 1, so that we said that's the square root of u, or in other words, u to the power of a half, so times by u to the power of a half, and then we times this here by dx, which is a half du. Okay, so it looks a little bit messy here, so how can we make um, life a little bit easier here and deal with this integral? Well, the first thing that I noticed is I've got a half here and a half here, so if we times everything through, I'm going to get 1 over 4. And what I'm going to do then is apply linearity here to take the 1 over 4 outside the integral. Okay. I've got 1 over 4 and my integral here. So what I've got now is u minus 1. I've got u minus 1 times by u to the power of a half. And this is with respect to u then. So I've got simply du at the very end, which is exactly what we want here. So it's looking good so far. Now what we need to do is simplify the integral here. So u minus 1 times u to the power of a half. So just expand this bracket here by this term on the outside. So u times u to the power of a half. So that's u to the power of 1 times by u to the power of a half. So simple rules here for indices. So I get the 1 over 4 on the outside again. Like so. I've got the integral here. So that we said then this is u to the power of 1 times by u to the power of a half. So that would be u to the power of 3 over 2. Like so. We then got minus 1 times u to the power of a half, so that would be minus u to the power of a half. Okay, and this is with respect to u then, so du. Okay. So now what we need to do here is just perform the integration then, so add 1 to the power, divide by the new powers. So what I'm going to get then is 1 over 4 on the outside again. In this case then, so u to the power of 3 over 2, if I add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, I'm going to get u to the power of 5 over 2, we then divide by 5 over 2, so I'm going to get u to the 5 over 2, if I divide by 5 over 2 here, that's the same as times it by 2 over 5. What I had to get here then is 2u to the 5 over 2, all over 5, okay, so we get 2u, to the 5 over 2, all over 5. Doing the same here then, so minus u to the power of a half, so add 1 to the power, so again that's going to be u to the power of 3 over 2, so I'll do it over here, so u to 3 over 2, we then divide by this power here, so we divide by 3 over 2, so that's the same as times in through by 2 over 3, so I get 2u to the 3 over 2 divided by 3, okay. So minus then 2u to the power of 3 over 2. That's supposed to be a 3 there. Let me just rewrite that. It doesn't look like a 3 at all. Let's try again. So 2u to the power of 3 over 2. There we go. And then we divide that by 3. Like so. And we're nearly here now. So what I want to do then is just basically simplify here. So if I've got 1 over 4 on the outside and I've got 2u here and 2u here, then they will cancel with this 4. That would be a 2 there. 
Now I've got a five here and a three here. So when I multiply through, what am I going to get? I'm going to get u to the power of five over two. And that will be over five times two, which is 10. And we minus here u to the power of three over two. And that's going to be over three times two, which is six. And we're nearly done here. So first thing to not forget then is the constant integration. We don't have any limits on this integral. Notice here. So I need a plus C. But what I also need to do then is use the original substitution. So rather than leaving it like this in terms of U, if we go back to the original substitution then. So if I do that over here, hopefully I'll have just about enough room then. So U to the power of 5 over 2 divided by 10. Well, if U is 2X plus 1, what I've got here then is 2X plus 1 to the power of 5 over 2. And that's all over. 10 there. Then we minus u to the power of 3 over 2 over 6. So again, u is 2x plus 1. So minus here 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. And that's all over 6 here. And then don't forget the constant of integration. So plus c there. Okay. And there we have it. So, like you see, a little bit more work involved for question 2 there compared to question 1. Um, but you will sometimes just get questions that do require a bit of extra work. But there we have it. So that is the solution there to question two. And finally, then, if we take a look now at the very last question here, question three, we want to use the substitution u equals x plus two to show that the integral of x over x plus two with respect to x from minus one to three is equal to four minus two ln five. And let me just start by writing down the original integral here. So we're integrating x over x plus 2 with respect to x here. And this is from minus 1 to 3. OK. And we're also using the substitution then u equals x plus 2. So u is equal to x plus 2. So like we've done for the previous two questions, then I'm also going to start by differentiating u here with respect to x to get du by dx. So du by dx in this case is nice and straightforward. We simply get 1. And what that means then is dx here is equal to du. OK. Now we've also got two other things to consider. We've got the um, numerator here, which is x. And we also have the denominator here, which is x plus 2. So my substitution here for the numerator, we obtain that by going back to the original substitution and rearranging and making x a subject. So here then, if we do that, we get x equals u minus 2. So u minus 2 there. And now for the denominator here, well, we know that u is equal to x plus 2. So we've actually got everything that we need then to transform this integral here. So we're integrating. And don't worry about the limits for now. We'll come back to that in a moment. So I've got x here, which is u minus 2. I've got u minus 2 there. That's all over x plus 2, which is u. And then we have dx here, which is equal to du. OK. Now, in terms of limits here, we can go one of two ways with this. So we can either transform the limits here or change the limits here. So I'm going to do that method first. And then the second method is to just go through with the integration, get the correct result, and then go back to the substitution here for x. OK, and then use the original limits. Either method is fine. It's completely up to you. Like I said, I'm going to show both methods, though, so you can see how it works for both methods. So if I change the limits here, then how do we do that? Well, we use the original substitution. So x here is minus 1 and 3. So I've got the lower limit and the upper limit on our integral. So when x equals minus 1, u is equal. So that's going to be minus 1 plus 2, so that would be 1. And then when x is equal to 3, u is equal to 5, because 3 plus 2 is 5 there. OK, so my new limits here then would be 1 and 5. OK, so now let's simplify the integral here. So I've got u minus 2 over u. So we can split this up then as two fractions. So I've got u over u minus 2 over u. Well, u over u is 1. So what I'm doing here is I'm integrating 1 with respect to u. So I've got the integral of 1 du. I've then got the integral here of 2 over u. So I'm going to apply linearity here and take the two outside. I've got minus two lots of the integral 
of 1 over u du. Okay, like so. I won't worry about the limits yet. I'm going to do those at the very end. Well, the integral of 1 with respect to u, that's nice and straightforward. That's simply u. So we get u there. The integral of 1 over u, that is the natural logarithm of u. So I've got minus 2 lots of that. I've got minus 2 ln u. Now, don't forget the modulus sign here when we're integrating like this and working with the natural logarithm. So minus 2 lots of the natural logarithm of u, like so. And now, if we consider the limits here then, so put it in square brackets. So from 1 to 5 then. So what we do here is we start with the upper limit. So in that case then, I'll do it underneath. I've got 5 minus 2 ln 5. Like so. We then subtract the lower limit here. So in that case, we're going to get 1 minus 2 ln 1. Like so. Now you should notice straight away the natural logarithm of 1 is 0. So this part here would be 0. So what I get left with then is 5 minus 2 ln 5 minus 1, which if we simplify is equal to 4 minus 2 ln 5. Okay, as required there. Okay, so as required. As required. And we'd be done there, right? So that would be question complete. But I also want to show you the second way that you can do it with the limits. So we go back to the integral then. Okay, so we wouldn't change the limits here. We still be working with the original limits. We're not going to change those. What we do then is we get to this point here. Okay, so from here then, I'll do it over here. Let me do this in a different color. So let me do it in, say, dark red. So what I do now is rather than working this with this in terms of u, I go back to the original substitution, which is u equals x plus 2. So what I've got here then is x plus 2 minus 2 ln x plus 2. Okay. And this is for the original limits then. So rather than 1 and 5, this is the original limits of minus 1 and 3. Okay. And the process is the exact same here then. So we start by substituting the upper limit in. So I get 3 plus 2 here. That would be 5. I've then got minus 2 ln, well, I've got 3 plus 2, so that's 5. So 5 minus 2 ln 5. That's my upper limit. We then subtract the lower limit, like just like we've done here, for the um, limits here of 1 and 5. So obviously, this is just um, integration with limits. Should hopefully be nice and straightforward by this point. So if my lower limit here is minus 1, I've got minus 1 plus 2, so that's 1. Minus 2 ln. So minus 1 plus 2, again, I get ln 1 there. So I've got minus 1 minus 2 ln 1, like so. And again, you can see this is going to simplify to give me the exact same. So I've got 5 minus 2 ln 5. Here then, I get minus 1 plus 2 ln 1. But obviously, ln 1 is 0. So again, that would just be 0. Okay, so I get minus 1 there. And when we simplify that, we get 4 minus 2 ln 5. Again, as required. Okay, so either method is fine. Um, sometimes you might have to get the integral into that form with the limits like it asks you to. So in that case, then it's just more straightforward to just go with those limits there. Okay, but if it doesn't specify, either method is absolutely fine. But there we have it. So that's the solution to the very last question, question three. And that brings the end of this video on integration by substitution.